Hi, this is Ellen, your health sciences librarian at UMass Amherst with my top five tips for doing a literature search. Tip number one, select the relevant databases. You're often going to want to use more than one database for your search. If you don't know the specific databases that are best for your subject area, which you can then select under databases and collections, you can go down to start your research and then choose research guides by subject. This will give you a list of all the departments and programs on campus, and you can choose the appropriate one. I'm going to scroll down to nursing for my example. And there are a few choices, but if you're just getting started using the, the main one for that topic area, so just the plain nursing guide is probably best. I will point out that if you are a graduate student or you're doing a more formal type review, taking a look at this lit review, literature reviews, systematic reviews, and more for health sciences can have some additional tips and tools available to you. But for now, I'm going to go into the nursing guide. And in the guides I put together, I always have a tab called articles. Um, other librarians may use journals or databases for the tab that lists that information. I'm going to go to articles and this will show me show you the databases that I recommend for that subject area. For my sample search today, I'm going to use the CINAHL Complete database. If you're off campus and get the off campus login, just use your NetID and password so that you can connect from off campus. Tip number two is to think of alternate terms for each concept in your research question or your topic. So if my research question is, is telehealth an effective way of monitoring glucose in diabetic patients? My search might look like something like this. So for diabetic patients, I'm just going to use diabetic or diabetes because research may use either researchers may use either of those terms. For telehealth, I thought telehealth, but there's lots of different alternative terms here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this option so I can make sure I'm getting a good a good broad view of whether they call it telehealth or telemedicine, whatever they're calling it, uh, I will get those results. And then I'm going to do glucose, but it also could be blood sugar, perhaps, or maybe they're talking about A1C. All of those are kind of the same thing, so I'm going to include all of them in my search. You often may have to try a few different searches to get results that are the give you the type of articles that you want, but that's just part of the research process. Tip number three is use the built-in limiters when they're appropriate. The one I will recommend that you do not ever use while you're a UMass Amherst student is the full text option. That limits you to only articles that this one database thinks you have access to. We subscribe to almost 600 databases, so that's a lot of content you could miss out on. For example, if I click the full text, instead of seeing the 378 results that I got, I'm only going to see 81. So that's a whole lot that I'm not seeing that I can probably have access to through another database. So I'm now going to remove that limit. A limiter that you might want to use is the date limiter. A lot of times you may be looking at the most recent or the most current articles on a topic. So I'm going to limit to only articles that have been published in the last five years, so since 2015. Now I'm down to 165 articles. Again, if you're a graduate student working on your the literature review for your capstone or your thesis or your dissertation, you probably will be asked to have inclusion and exclusion criteria, or it's a good idea to do that. That's just another way of framing how you're choosing the articles that you're, you end up using in your paper. Not just, oh, I chose the first five articles that came up. Uh, but you can do that by indicating which limiters you apply and other criteria that are helping you to select your articles. An example would be, an inclusion criteria would be articles that were published from 2015 to 2020. An example exclusion criteria would be studies that were done outside the United States and Canada. So you're limiting to only articles that or studies that were done in the US and Canada. 
Tip number four is keep track of the search that you do and how many results you get. So if you go into the search history or sometimes in the advanced search that will be listed, depending on the database you're using, you can easily copy the search that you did. And I can paste that into, for I have it as an example here in a Google Doc. So I've got the date that I did the search, the database that I searched, so 30 March 2020, CINAHL, the search string that I used, that's what I just copied, the limiters that I applied, so I limited it to 2015 to 2020, and I got 165 results. This only takes you a minute or two to document this, and in some cases, you're going to need that information. So it's definitely better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Trust me, I've worked with grad students and tried to reverse engineer and recreate searches after the fact, and it is not easy to do. And tip number five is ask me if you have questions or need help. I'm your librarian, I'm here to help you. On all of the guides on the homepage, if you look under the navigation, there'll be an option here in my profile box to email me. My email address, you can also just directly email me at lutz at umass.edu, it's L-U-T-Z at umass.edu. Or if you want to set up a Zoom chat or a phone call, you can use the schedule appointment and it will link to my calendar in real time and let you choose a time that I'm available that works for you and we can meet to talk about your specific topic and search strategy. I hope you find this helpful and good luck.